So today we will be looking at the relay tester that I have been waiting for for years. And that would be this guy right here, the Lyle 60150 relay tester. I'm calling it a universal relay tester. They should probably have called it that because of reasons we'll get into. Um, they, they've had relay testers out for the longest time. Um, forever and basically what, what your your standard relay tester would be before this thing uh, came around you would have this is the, the, the new one by the way um, you, you would have a box that unlike this one with the big old alligator clips for the battery and then on the front of the box you would have a various number of four or five six relays that you would take plug into the box and then you hit the button and you test it the reason I never was a, fi a fan of those. It was because if you have six relays that you could test on the front of the, your box there, um, the one that you want to test isn't going to be available to test on that box. It's just the way the way world works. Uh, the thing that makes this one special is that it is, again, a universal tester where you just take these here five. Yeah, there's one down here. Uh, five leads plug it into your relay and it figures out the different uh, pathways on, on the relay and does this little test and it doesn't matter if it's your your standard old school Bosch style relay, um, these little mini cube relays or something goofy like this that we're gonna we're gonna try out. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just the, the way the industry is is that such and such machine manufacturer they kind of try to make things as, as proprietary as possible to keep you from going aftermarket and as you can see here we got two relays and um, they're basically the same exact form factor but the pinouts are different on the back and that's just to keep you from going aftermarket as best I could tell so, uh, what we will do is, um, let's look down, we'll kind of go over the basics of a relay, and uh, we'll give this thing a try, see, see how she works out. Uh, this particular one, I don't think I mentioned it yet, works with four and five terminal relays. So, um, and if you got a, a four terminal relay, we don't have one here, but if you have a four terminal relay, you just set the button for four terminals and you leave one of the wires off. It's pretty simple. Uh, so yeah, let's... Uh, Take a, take a flip down on the old camera there and uh, see how this guy works. So this right here is your standard relay configuration as far as you would see on a, on a schematic or a diagram. Um, this line right down here, this is the uh, coil, which for the most part or actually works as a electromagnet. You put power and negative on either side, doesn't matter which energizes the coil and it makes a magnet and that's what you could see right down in here uh, over here this would be your number 30 on these style relays and that is your power into the relay and that would be your contacts coming up here this little copper wire that's hot all the time uh, when the relay isn't energized which would be in its normally um, closed position this one over here would have power going through it with no power being introduced into the uh, coil down here. Now, when you energize the coil, this little line right here clicks down to here, and then you have power coming out of this guy. So what I'm guessing is the way this guy would work with its random wires that plug in anywhere is I'm thinking it's like some type of brain box in this thing. And what it does is it takes the 12 volts coming into this thing from, from your battery off of the uh, big old alligator clips over here that are currently getting ready to be plugged into the battery. And um, yeah, I think it just probably will just pulse 12 volts on each one of them. If it pulses 12 volts on either one of these terminals here, it's going to have a resistance on the other end of it, so it knows that that's the coil. If it pulses voltage here and it sees voltage here, it knows that that's the normally closed. And if it pulses voltage here, and it doesn't see any voltage here. It knows that that's the normally open one. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm surprised it took this long for someone to come up with it. But, um, yeah, so let me uh, get this paper off the desk here, and uh, we'll take a look at testing some relays. Now, on second thought, before we actually get into it, let's give you a kind of an example of how you would 
test a relay normally to see kind of see how this would be a time saver and you can see multiple jumper cables set up here power going from the battery down to here you got yourself a ground lead test light we're on the normally uh, normally open side of the relay and we just kind of come in here and a little test light lights up okay that works and then we come over here to the normally closed side of the relay and it lights up with no power going to it and it should shut off when you put power to the relay and I am touching that there we go <laughs> there we go so yeah that's that's the basic deal there and now with the relay tester did I ever tell you you shouldn't wear jewelry when playing with electricity <laughs> do as I say not as I do so we got power going to the actual relay tester right here uh, select switches that green light between four and five pins and you just come in here and you hook up all the wires I will say I kind of like that these boots on these wires kind of have a little slot cut in them kind of makes it a little bit easier to get them on there one two three four five there we go and you just push the button and I'm gonna be quiet so you can actually hear it hear it doing its thing And there you go. We got a pass because it's a good relay. And what it's doing, like like I said, with how I think it kind of works, is I'm pretty sure that it's just popping these back and forth. And um, one, after it kind of figures out what it's doing, it just clicks those contacts open and closed. It seemed like probably a little bit over a dozen times. And it's basically just looking to see if there's any... Um, welding going on with these contactors when they're opening and closing is my best bet so let's try another style um, different form factor basically the same principle all right we're all hooked up it doesn't say but i think it would probably be a good idea to reset this thing between relays if you're testing different style relays we'll get another shot All right, we got another pass. These relays I've had sitting in my just-in-case bin that every mechanic has, and I just grabbed the different ones that I had. And last but not least, I got this goofy thing that's been sitting in the bottom of my just-in-case bucket for the longest time. I think this came off of a Cummings engine. It might have something to do with the glow plugs or whatnot. This one is actually a six terminal relay or a six pin relay but these two pins in the middle here are staked together so it's just two outputs on one pin so let's hook this guy up and see if it'll do something goofy like this I'll tell you one thing this big one's a lot easier to hook the leads up to give it a try it's a lot louder <laughs> Nice little ring to it. And there you go. We got another pass. Well, we've seen it pass relays. Let's see if it'll actually fail one that, that we're going to make fail. And I'm going to stick a little little zip tie in here and prevent that normally open side from closing. When it's energized, and we'll see what happens. And no clickies because this is open and we got ourselves a fail. And just in case you were wondering what it actually kind of looks like in there when it's running, that's it doing its thing. Open and closing that relay. And there you go. Got ourselves a pass. So, pretty cool. So one, one quick thing before we close this video out that this relay tester will not repair that I forgot to mention. And that would be a thing that I... 
I don't know if the technical term, but I call it a thermal short or a thermal open. And uh, basically what it is is that this here, the windings for the actual coil, these guys right here, it's basically just a thin copper wire coated in uh, some type of material that keeps it from shorting out against each other. If you get a short inside those wires or say one of them breaks, I've seen in the past with not only relays, but... Um, things like crank sensors, anything with a, with a magnetic coil in it, uh, it'll work fine when it's cold, and then when it heats up, the coils expand inside there, and it can actually cause a break. and Or it could open up and it cause a short. So in the case of a break, it'll run fine when it's, when it's cold, and then after, you know, 10 minutes, when it gets as hot as it's going to get, that coil will open up, and then this thing will this thing will stop working it'll, op it'll basically open the relay or it'll short straight to positive and then the thing heats up really quick and then it gets weak i had one one time where i would flick it like that and when it was hot it would it would lose contact so uh one thing to keep in mind i think in that case if that's something that you're actually thinking about either test it after it's been in the machine running for a little bit and got hot or just jump out the um the coil itself positive and negative let it sit for 10 20 minutes and then test it and see see what that uh gets you so there we go that was the lyle 60150 relay tester um yeah it's a, it's a cool little thing it, it does as advertised we tested it on three four different style relays it seems to work on all all of them and um yeah lyle's a tool a cool little tool company um they kind of get into like the the more gadgety type stuff which which everyone who knows me knows that i'm into a into a good gadget as far as that goes and they've been around for years and i've used a lot of their stuff and they're, they're pretty pretty dependable tools as far as i could tell but um yeah this this definitely would be a time saver i mean just one relay yeah, probably you know the jumper leaves isn't going to send you that save you save you that much time, but if you're talking an older piece of equipment where you know you got five, six, ten relays back in the day, relays were almost used like computers for lock offs and and uh, safety interlocks. And uh, yeah, you you suspect one of them's bad, and instead of having to dig through the schematic for twenty minutes to figure out which one's going to which, and this one it, it gets complicated. It'd be nice to be able to just you know take the relays out one by one, test them, and through a little process of elimination, know that it either is a bad relay in that circuit or all the relays are good and you got to bark up a different tree. So, um, yeah, that's about it for this video. This particular one I bought off of uh, Nick over there at JDT Co. Um, I will you get it from him or I'll just uh, put a link in the old uh, comments there for, for Amazon. I think as of the day that I was filming this, it was going for like 60 bucks over on Amazon. And I've been looking at this for about a month and a half. It started at 80 and now it's down to 60. So I don't know if it was just like that initial, it's a new thing. We could charge a little bit more and now we're going to knock the price down. But um, yeah, 60 bucks for this. I mean, well worth it as far as just eliminating headaches. So um, yeah, that's about it for this video. I would like to thank you all for watching. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the old comments section. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching. There you go. So let's try that again. This wire's grabbing everything. Let's, let's try that again. My thing fell down. And um, we're going to start that over. So I got distracted. Why you would ever have a problem. Again, Lyle's a, a pretty... Just scratched my balls on camera. Let's start that over.